name is Jennifer Frazier. I'm the pastor here at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. It is good to be in worship with you, and it is good to be in worship with you who are joining us online, as is the tradition after worship, after Easter, the Sunday after Easter. Um, we're all a little befuddled and uh, trying to catch up. So, uh, but, but I think we've got our, our act together now. Um, I have a few announcements before we get started. One, actually, I forgot to put the announcements on the screen, so I'm going to try to remember them. And as those of you who know, I have a really hard time remembering things up here. But um, So there's a couple of things I was supposed to tell. One of them is we need some help with the fellowship hour. We've, uh, some of you have done this before where, you know, you make the coffee and the treats and you set them out. Uh, I think next Sunday we do not have anybody signed up to do it. So if you are able to... Uh, do that. Uh, we do need somebody for next week. Otherwise, we might not have coffee, and that would be a that would be a disaster. So, <laughs> um, so that was one of the announcements. Um, another announcement: Yesterday, we had an amazing concert here uh, with the honeysuckle possums. Um, it was made possible by a, a, a generous donation to invite them in, and so we had a lot of people here in our sanctuary who uh, are from our neighborhood and who are familiar with the honeysuckle possums and. Um, and, and yet they, so they had an opportunity to be in our sanctuary and listen to some fantastic music. And so it was a great opportunity to share that with them. And of course, then we also raised money for, um, for Transition House. We raised almost 2,500, I think, is where we're at right now. No. I'm sorry. Did, what did I say? Oh, Noah's Anchorage. So see, Sunday after Easter. It's not good. Um, yeah. Uh, so in your pews, you should see there's some yellow, there's a yellow welcome card there. If you are new to our congregation or if you have been coming for a while and you want a little bit more contact, I would encourage you to fill out that yellow card. You can place, put your name and your contact information. There's a box there that you can select to say you want to you know, call from the pastor or you want to get on our newsletter. And then and after you fill that out, you can put it in the offering plate as it goes by. Um, we also have a pink prayer card. So if you have a prayer uh, concern, if you have something that you're concerned about or uh, somebody in your life who needs prayer, you can write their name on that or, and, um, and write the prayer concern and also place that in the offering plate, and it will get to our prayer chain. Um, it is Communion Sunday. As we get to the time of communion, we will be, um, of, of course, we will have... Do we have elders for communion? If you're the elder who's serving communion, oh, yep, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so we will be passing the communion plates in the pews. So when you receive it, you can uh, hand it to your neighbor um, as well. Um, if you do not uh, want to take communion, that is perfectly okay. You can um, just uh, you know, just close your hands, and, and if you're the only one in the aisle, the uh, usher will know not that you are just passing this time. Um, I had another announcement that I want to go to, but I, uh, what, what, do, what do I need to tell people? Um, we do have a, we have somebody who's coming to speak to us during our moment for mission, Eric uh, Tallon, who's with us this morning. I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about um, uh, Santa Barbara Food Bank, of which we are starting restarting our collection with. Um, I'm afraid I'm forgetting something. Oh, yeah, I know. So, so when you get to the slides, with the prelude, the postlude, and the offertory, there's going to be some big question marks on there. And that's not because we were slacking this week, um, but because we have some surprise pieces for you in there. So we'll see when we get there. Also, oh, this is, this is what I forgot. It's Holy Humor Sunday. Um, <laughs> so there's going to be periods of time in the service, and they're in your bulletins, where we will have an opportunity to, you'll have an opportunity to share a joke. Now, holy humor is humor that lifts us up um, and lifts our spirits and, and uh, makes us laugh. And, um, and so uh, some of you, I know, have jokes prepared. We don't have as much time this year as we've had in the past, so we're only going to have about two sections for, for some jokes in our worship service today. We're also having a hymn sing, so there's going to be two opportunities, just two, um, so it's not, not a ton, uh, but where you can pick a, a hymn. So if you um, have a hymn that you would like to hear sung that we don't normally sing, uh, if you, I think I, I saw somebody looking in the, in, the, in the book earlier, so if you have it, just raise your hand. When we get to that point in the service, raise your hand and we will get to it. So before we get started, can you see a purple hymnal in front of you? If you do not have a purple hymnal, 
not, not the blue, the blue ones are the Bibles, the purple, yeah. If you don't have a purple hymnal, you're going to be lost when we sing the hymns because we're going to have to use the hymnals. Um, so if you don't have one, raise your hand, and Bob is prepared to run one across the, uh, the church to you. So you'll have plenty of time to, to, yep, there you go. Okay, good. I think that's, I think I remembered it. I think I remembered everything I was supposed to remember, which would be a first. Um, so with that, uh, this, morning, this morning in worship, Tim Accurso is with us on the piano. I'm so glad that Tim is here with us. Aaron McKibben, of course, is leading us in singing. Uh, Linda Sizer is our, is our uh, liturgist today. I'm so glad to be leading worship with Linda this morning. Liam Paul is running our live stream in the back. Michael Padden Rubin is our sound person. Um, Bob Shapiro is our usher this morning. Uh, Tom and Diane Weisenberger were our greeters, and Eric at Bowers and Mike Petrich are back there doing the fellowship hour. They're in the fellowship hall uh, doing the fellowship hour. Uh, Julie Summers and Carolyn Wilsey are with the kids this morning. So with that, let us prepare our hearts to worship God. <laughs>
Thank you, Tim. Good morning. Will you please rise in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship? God, who flung the stars into the night sky, rejoices over all creation, especially us. To us, laughing God, and gladden our hearts with your goodness and grace. Christ, the word of joy and life, fills all creation with hope, especially us. Come to us, brother and savior, and reclaim our hearts as your own. The spirit who breathes life into emptiness gives all creation the gift of peace, especially us. Come to us, spirit of gentleness, and refresh us with the dew of delight. may be seated. How often have we heard the good news of forgiveness and restoration, yet we are still reluctant to believe. God offers us new life, yet we're afraid to let go of the old. Let us confess our doubts and fears to the one who waits to make us whole. Please join me in the unison prayer of confession, followed by a moment of silence. We use a lot of words, gracious God, but do little to turn them into deeds. Instead of being one heart and soul, we choose sides and form groups of folks just like us. Blessed with great grace, we have trouble sharing it with those who need it most. Forgive us, God of love. Forgive us as we step out of your shadows into your light. Store us as we reveal our brokenness. Hear us as we proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord and our God.
friends, this is the good news we have to declare. God leads us out of the shadows to walk in the light of Christ. This is the word we have. Our faithful God forgives our sins and raises us to new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us share signs of peace with one another. So as we gather back, we've, we're gonna, before we do the hymn, let's do a couple jokes. So we'll start with a couple jokes. Um, Carol, would you like to kick us off? Okay. Oh, okay. It's a twofer. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. This fellow was walking down the street and he noticed a sign on a house. Better? <laughs> that said, for sale, a talking dog. He was intrigued, so he went inside. There was a dog. He said, so, what have you done with your life? And the dog said, I've had a very full life. I lived in the Alps for a while, rescuing people from um, avalanches, sorry, rescuing people from avalanches. After that, I served my country in Iraq, and now I read stories to residents of a nursing home. And the guy was just flabbergasted. He looked at the man and he said, why in the world would you sell this incredible dog? And the man said, he's a liar. He never did any of that stuff. <laughs> So, <clears throat> a priest is driving down a country road when a trooper pulls him over. He immediately smells alcohol on the priest's breath and notices an empty wine bottle in the car. He says, have you been drinking? Just water, said the priest. The cop replies, then why do I smell wine? The priest looks at the bottle and says, Good Lord, he's done it again. <laughs> we have additional material if time permits. <laughs> All right. You are going up with some determination. Do you have, you have a joke? No, 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 I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so now I think we're going we're gonna, to um, switch to the hymn sing. So if any, does anybody have a hymn that they would like to do? Uh, Florence. Five one five versus one and five. So five one five versus one and five. Together. 
Thank you. <laughs> Any other hymn requests? Louise. 721. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> Four sixty five. First, first verse. Oh, I like this one. <laughs> four six, four sixty five. Let's pray. O oh God, our guide, set your path clearly before us and lead us to follow you willingly. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First scripture is Psalm chapter 133, verse 1 through 3. How very good and pleasant it is when the kindred live together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For therefore the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. This ends the reading of the first scripture.
That is the only scripture reading we have this morning. So as somebody out there said, um, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So um, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what the week ahead has in store for me. I'm going to be traveling I'm going to get on a plane tomorrow morning, and I'll be in Denver. Uh, I'm going to land in Denver Airport, and then I have to stay there for a couple hours. So I'll be in Denver when the eclipse comes. So I'm hoping that I can find some eclipse glasses so that I'll be at the airport, so hopefully I'll be able to see it. I hope you all are, have an opportunity to see the eclipse um, with glasses and safe, safely and all that. Um, but the reason why I'm traveling, I'm going to, I'm going to Washington, D.C., ultimately. So then I'll get on a plane and go to Baltimore and then drive out to D.C., but I'm going for a conference uh, with, it's my first post-COVID in-person conference, and it is at a place called the Bowen Center for the Family. And this is a center I've been working with for almost 10 years now. Um, when I say working, I mean, you know, they, they do a lot of research and they produce a lot of um, uh, uh, articles and, and workshops and books and such, and I've been participating in those for years now, and I do actually monthly coaching with them as well. And so you might think, well, what in the world is a pastor doing with a center for the study of the family? Well, I mean, I guess if you look around in the pews and you see how many families are here, you can understand why a pastor might need to know something about families, uh, family dynamics. Um, and this particular scripture is uh, very much about family. So. Um, I want to talk a little bit about it as well from that perspective. Last year I preached on this sermon, preached also about family, but from a slightly different perspective. But this, this uh, Friday, most of you know, we had the service for uh, Elaine Grimacy, Elaine's family is here today as well, um, uh, Bob, and, um, uh, Bob and Suzanne. And, and uh, it, it was, you know, one of the things about Elaine's life is that family was very important to her. That was pretty apparent, and it was very apparent in watching the family gather. Uh, and, and during this, the service, Bob shared a story about how he and Elaine, as kids, shared a bedroom and that their mom put up like a blanket between them. And what struck me about the story was Bob said um, that you couldn't remember crosswords being said it, in that arrangement, uh, despite the arrangement uh, where they were sharing the bedroom. Um, I also shared a room with my sister as a child, but we did not get along as well as Bob and Elaine did. Um, my sister is my best friend today, um, but I still don't know how well we would do if we were roommates, I can tell you that. Uh, she and I fought horribly as kids, horribly. Uh, so bad that finally my father constructed this wall in our room. I mean, he literally built a wall, and it wasn't a blanket. It was... It was um, thick, too. And he actually, it was actually pretty ingenious. He did a loft so that we could sleep up in our loft, and we could, had a dressing area below, and of course there was that dividing wall. And it was, tensions were so bad between us that at, there was a section of the room where you could go from one side to the other, and even in that section we had to put a little tape down to say, this side is mine, and that side is yours. And eventually we outgrew the room because, like I said, it was a loft. And so my father had to tear it all down. And then we were back to sharing a regular room. And by this time we were, like, beginning to be, we were entering into adolescence. So you can imagine it was only worse. You know, it was only going to get worse. Um, so it did not go well. And one day I decided I couldn't take it anymore. And um, so I told my mother I was moving into the garage. And um, I think she thought I was kidding. Uh, I was, but I wasn't. <laughs> so, um, I, I, so I went out to the garage. I swept away all the spider webs. I moved all my father's tools to one side of the garage. And I moved my bed and my nightstand and my dresser and my alarm clock out there. And I took up residence in the garage. <clears throat> and I still remember that sense of freedom that I had. Like, ah, oh, um, I, I may be sleeping next to the family car, but at least I don't have, um, I don't have to live under the burden of my older sibling. Um, and I, I think my dad must have thought that I was going to get cold eventually or scared and I would come back into the house, but I didn't. And so eventually he was forced to convert half of the garage into an actual bedroom for me. And so I finally got my own room. 
Tensions in families can be intense. And like I said, today my sister is my best friend. But when we were growing up in the, house, in the same household, we were definitely enemies. I'd say, in fact, I'd say she was my first enemy. Right? And there isn't anything that I wouldn't do for my sister. I can tell you that. But the only other person in the world I have fought with as intensely as my sister and I did is the fighting that I do with my middle daughter, Gracie. Um, and that is because Gracie is just like my sister. Some of you know Gracie. She came and did a sermon here at, at St. Andrew's with me. And, I, and all of my family, when they knew that this was going to happen, that Gracie and I were going to be up on the same uh, chancel together <laughs> doing a sermon, they were all convinced that we were going to get in a fight on the way down the aisle. Um, we didn't. We were on our best behavior. So that psalm that Linda read is short and sweet. It starts out how very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Sometimes when the Bible refers to family or kindred, we transpose our idea of a church family onto it. But in this case, the psalm is actually referring to family. And it's not sentimentalizing the warmth of family closeness like a Hallmark card might. It's taking one of the most challenging, costly relationships, and it's turning it on its head. Let me explain. In ancient Israel, family estates were not typically divided in the same way that we would divide an inheritance among our children. All of a family's land and animals and resources would have been passed down to the oldest brother. And the sisters would have been married off, so there wasn't any concern about them. But what about the younger brothers? What happened to them? Woe to the younger brother, I can say. Like me, they were forced to live under the rule of their older sibling. And as those of us who are young, younger siblings know, that's not always an easy arrangement to endure. So there were a lot of interfamily disputes. And it's no mistake that the Bible, in the Bible there are stories about feuds between brothers, and, 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 uh, and God always seems to be on the side of the younger brother. Um, and I think that's in part because God is always on the side of the underdog. And the younger brother was the underdog. So when this psalm says that unity among siblings is like the precious oil on the head running down on, upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collars of his robe, it is like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. It's beautiful language. And what this is meant to acknowledge is that unity among siblings is also rare. The oil that runs down on Aaron's beard and over the collar of his robe is precious. It is a substance of such value that one should not waste it or treat it carelessly. And we know that as well because of the region, the dew of Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion was also rare and precious. A couple of years ago at a family gathering, I was sharing a memory from my childhood. And my memory was from the 1970s when my mother was going through a health food phase. And one of the recipes that she tried out regularly on us was called cottage cheesecake, which is cheesecake made out of cottage cheese instead of cream cheese. And it was as bad as it sounds. And I shared about, and I shared that in this, in this family gathering, I said, you know, to this day, I cannot eat cheesecake, no matter how delicious it may be. And people always reassure me, oh, no, it's delicious. But what, or, or it doesn't matter what the ingredients are. It doesn't matter if they've used the best cream cheese in the world. I cannot eat it because just the mention of cheesecake causes this flood of memories of my mother's experimental health food cooking 
including the taste of that cottage cheese cheesecake. And when I said this, my sister locked eyes with me from across the room. She didn't have to say a word. I knew exactly what she was thinking. I, too, am traumatized by the memory of cottage cheesecake. I could hear loudly. It is buried deep within my psyche. No one seems to understand this experience, but you and I, we know. I knew that was what was going through her mind, but all she said was, and this is why you cannot die on me. <laughs> Family relationships are intense. They can be very difficult. I know a lot of people who have to be guarded because whenever they come in contact with their family because of mental health issues or because of long-standing hostility. I also know people who cannot be around family members at all because it may be even dangerous for them. When I hear that from people, what I say to them is, I understand, it can be difficult. Is there any family member that you can make a connection with? It doesn't matter if it's a cousin, a distant cousin, or an aunt or an uncle, or a friend of your parents. It is important to establish those connections that, that, that reflect for us that family. Because it's hard to be whole without them. Because you aren't whole without them. They are a part of who you are. We share experiences and understandings with our family members that are rare and that, they, and that run deep. And as challenging as family can be, there is this precious quality to the bonds. And whenever we make those connections, those rare and beautiful connections with family members, I believe it has the capacity to heal us and to make us whole and even to connect us with God. And for some of us, this is a lifetime's work. Amen. Five forty three. It's stories for verses one and five. Great. One and five. Three seventy five. For your father. Yeah, how, how many verses would you like? Let's do. Why don't we do one and four? We'll do okay. the first and the last. Yeah, yeah. one and four. <laughs>
Sorry? Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing your podium with me. Uh, I know it was difficult for you, but I'll keep on this side um, <laughs> and make sure there's no trouble. Thanks also to uh, Anne Padden Rubin for uh, inviting me, uh, and you, Jennifer, as well, and for sharing your beautiful church. It's so lovely to sit here uh, and to share communion with you today. So my name is Eric Talk, and I am the CEO of the Food Bank of Santa Barbara County, and I've been doing that job for 16 years now, uh, man and boy. Um, and um, it's great that today is Holy Humor Day. I suppose there's a lot of pressure on me now to come up with a food joke. Um, so I will rise to the occasion. Um, okay, so why did the sesame seed not want to leave the casino? Because it was on a roll. Uh, okay, it's all downhill from here. Uh, um, so the food bank, you know, I'm sure everyone is familiar with it in one way or another. Uh, maybe you've volunteered at some point, you've dropped food off. Thank you so much for what you've done already. Uh, and we really are so close to you here. I mean, our current location is l almost across the road there by the Page Youth Center. Uh, we are going to be moving, please, I hope, uh, in September of this year. Uh, we've been working on a new facility that's across, further up Hollister, across from Decker's. Uh, in the business park there. It's several times bigger. It's going to allow us to provide a lot more food to the community. So I encourage you all to kind of come and visit when we open it up there. So the food bank works across the whole county. We distribute healthy food, about 11 million pounds a year, uh, through partnership with over 200 nonprofit agencies. So they all come to us to get their food for their own programs. Um, but food is really only half of what we are involved with. Uh, because just giving people food and hoping that their life changes or they get healthier, um, you know, that's, uh, it's not enough. Uh, we want to see long-term health changes in people and people to feel more empowered and not have the need for emergency food. Um, so we're very into something that's called food literacy. So it's building the skills to be comfortable with looking after your own health with food, uh, how to uh, plan, how to budget, how to shop effectively, how to cook very quickly, and then use leftovers. So these are kind of skills that we are teaching very young kids. We start at the preschool level, we go right up to high school to really build that confidence and nutritional health across the county. So the food bank is also there in times of disaster, 
Um, you know, during the debris flow, we provided food. Uh, we're ready if there's a significant earthquake to really feed everyone in the community if they need to be fed. Um, we have aspirations also of building a kitchen so that we can provide more food for older adults. We want to cook more prepared meals and get them out to people because that's the type of meals that people want nowadays. So we really need all the help that we can get from members of the community, whether you want to provide food through a food drive like this. So if you do want to drop off food, uh, go for the superfoods, go for the foods that provide so much nutrition in a small quantity that might be canned beans, uh, canned proteins like tuna fish or chicken, um, pasta, dried beans, dried fruit, uh, canned vegetables or fruit uh, with low sugar content. Any of those things, you know, really provide a lot of nutrition. Um, um, the Reverend here has already kicked in uh, three truckloads of cottage cheese, um, <laughs> so we, we are appreciative of that initial donation. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is your food bank. It's here for the community. Uh, the community run our programs and volunteer. If you want to volunteer, uh, we have a lot of opportunities. Uh, we also have our program called Backyard Bounty, where you can donate uh, food from your trees. Um, so we really encourage you to get involved with the food bank, and I will be here afterwards to answer any questions. Thank you. God has abundantly blessed us and called us to be community that honors each other, to serve others with joy, to share our love and material possessions. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give. As recipients of abundant life in Christ, we now offer our gifts to God. Please join me in our unison prayer of dedication. As we offer our gifts to you, loving God, remove any doubts about how 
they might be used. As you offer food to the hungry, hope to the despairing, joy to the grieving, and peace to the broken. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um, Porter, it looks like you have a joke to deliver. Well, we are blessed. Uh, we have a, a truly extraordinary group here at uh, St. Andrews. They're smart, they're strong, they're kind, really hardworking. They're great, at, great problem solvers, both locally and, and in the world. Uh, and they're just, uh, they're just fun to have around. And I'm talking about uh, St. Andrews Presbyterian women, four of whom are, or two of whom are in the uh, sanctuary today. Uh, and this is one of their stories. Uh, it's, it's true because Dale Morgan uh, shared it with me. And this story starts with four Presbyterian women in a car uh, running down a country road on their way to a uh, Presbyterian women's conference back in Louisville, Kentucky. And it's kind of country. Uh, and uh, anyhow, uh, out from a, a cornfield, I think it was, a, a bunny hops, hops out onto the road, and they hit it. Uh, and so they pull over, oh no, this, this poor bunny, and they hop out and they look at it, and it is just squished. It's, it's flatter than a pancake. Dale Morgan says, oh, I've got this. And she runs around to the back of the car, pops open the trunk, opens her suitcase, pulls a can of hairspray out, goes back and starts spraying the rabbit. And the other women say, Dale, what the heck are you doing? And she says, you know, have faith. And she continues to spray the rabbit. Then she steps back and watches. And the rabbit begins to wiggle. The rabbit puffs up to, to full size and it waves at them. And then it goes hopping off down the road a little bit and turns around and it waves. And it hops a little farther and turns around and waves. And it continues to do this, hopping down the country road, waving until they can see it no more. And the, the three ladies ask Dale, what the heck was that? And she says, oh, it's hairspray for rejuvenating, restoring flat hair, now with permanent wave. something to say about uh, about women. So there's uh, this uh, 80, late 80s woman about to marry for the fourth time. Now this was rather kind of a newsy story, so a reporter decides to cover it and interview the woman. And he says to the old lady, Tell me a bit about what your husbands did for a living. And she says, well, the first was a banker. The second was a circus ringmaster. The third was a pastor. And the soon to be fourth is a funeral director. And he was quite... Uh, interested in that, and he said, ma'am, can you tell me, why did you choose husbands of such a varied profession? And she said, one was for the money, two for the show, <laughs> three to get ready, and four to go. <laughs> Carol, you want to close us out? George and Gracie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, this is about a middle-aged woman who was uh, having an operation for a heart attack. And she had a vision of God standing beside her in the surgical suite. And she said, will I die? He said, no, you have 30 more years to live. And she's thinking, wow, this is kind of exciting, 30 more years. 
I'm in the hospital. I might as well do it while I'm here. So she got uh, liposuction. She got breast implants. She got a tummy tuck. She got some injections in her lips. And she looked great. So when she gets discharged, she kind of walks out of the hospital with a swagger. She's feeling so good about herself. Crosses the street, immediately hit by an ambulance, and is killed. So in heaven, she sees God, and she says, you told me I had 30 more years. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> All right, so, oh, I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where she goes, okay. <clears throat> After Adam stayed out late a few nights, Eve became suspicious. You're running around with another woman admit it she demanded what other woman adam said you're it that night adam was fast asleep when he awoken by eve poking him in the chest what are you doing counting your ribs <laughs> one last one <clears throat> father buys a lie detector that makes a loud beep whenever somebody tells a lie the son comes home in the afternoon, and father asks him, so you're at school today, right? The son says, yeah, beep. Okay, okay, I was at the movies. Beep. All right, I went for a beer with my friends. What, at your age? I wouldn't touch alcohol. Beep. <laughs> and then the mother laughs. Ha, he really is your son. Beep. <laughs> Say good night, Carol. <laughs> one, one more. Okay, one more. We're, we're <laughs> I've been saving this all week. <laughs> I have a quote from the patron saint of redwood trees, John Muir. Flowers always make people better, happier, and more helpful. They are sunshine, food, and medicine for the soul. Weeds are flowers, too, once you get to know them. <laughs> that's, I think that's earning a <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for finishing us up, Ellen. And now, I, I put this in order for a reason. Now we're going to do the prayers of the people in case, we, in case somebody went astray. <laughs> All right. Uh, let us be together as a people of God and pray. Joyful God, we thank you for the gift of laughter. For it is truly a gift that heals the body, calms the soul, and breaks down barriers between people. It even makes thin the veil between heaven and earth. We thank you for all of the things that delight us with joy, a fresh morning breeze, the play of birds, a surprise punchline, the laughter of children. Most of all, we thank you for the promises that you make that make laughter possible, which is the life that we find in your son, Jesus Christ, and his triumph over death. Make us foolish enough to see that you are real and that the upside-down life that you offer to us is the way of peace and life eternal. We pray for those who cannot laugh today, those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, those who are living through the horrors of war, those who are locked in a prison cell or lost in an unhealthy relationship. We pray for moments of joy even in the midst of darkness. Lord, make us people who not only laugh, but who console the brokenhearted, 
bring peace to the conflicted, food to the hungry, shelter to the homeless who wander. Open our circle wider so that our joy is made greater. Let our invitation go out to those who are poor, found unworthy, overlooked or ignored. Cast our nets in the world to bring in a harvest ripe for the joy of your realm. When it seemed there was no hope, you emerged from the tomb and showed us a new way forward. When it seemed there were only endings, you showed us new beginnings. Strengthen our belief in the power of life over death. Strengthen our belief in the force of truth over falsehood, that we may be bearers of joy in the world. And now we raise our voices together, speaking the words of joyful prayer that you have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Come to this table. You who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been to the sacrament often, and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. May the risen Lord be with you. Lift your hearts to God, resurrection people. We lift our hearts to the one who is alive and gives us new life. Children of God, sing with joy on this day of resurrection. Songs of joy flow from our hearts. How good and pleasant it was, joyous God, when creation sprang forth. Great power flinging stars into the blue-black skies precious goodness dripping down the mountains into the valleys. We were created in your image, your breath filling us with your spirit. But in the evening of that day, we followed sin and death on the journey away from your grace. Your prophets came with great grace, declaring what they heard and saw. But we remain determined in our rebellion, though the doors of our hearts were locked for fear you would condemn us. Jesus came into our midst with words of peace on his lips. So with those from every time and every place with whom we hold faith in common, we sing your praises forever. of blessings, and gracious is your Son, Jesus our Christ. He came showing us his hands, which were full of your healing. He lived to stand by our side when pain and anger assailed us. He spoke, proclaiming your good news of salvation for rebellious children. He died, going deep into death's shadow, that we might walk in your light. 
as we gather to bear witness to his life and death, as we celebrate his resurrection and new hope, we declare that mystery we have seen and heard. Breathe on us, Spirit of God, as we gather around your table. Transform this simple bread into that gift of life, which, broken, can make us whole once again. Sanctify this common cup that it might become the grace for which we thirst in this and every moment. And when we have been nourished, may we go forth into the world, pushing aside the doors locked tight by the forces of prejudice and oppression, that all might receive your hope that everyone might feel your breath, bringing them back to life. And when we have come to the end of our journey, when we gather with our sisters and brothers around that feast of wonder and grace you prepare, we will join our hearts and voices in singing your praises throughout all eternity, God in community, holy in one. Around this table, we remember that night that Jesus gathered with his friends. And as he prepared for the meal, he took the bread. And after giving thanks to God for it, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the meal was concluded, he took the cup. And pouring it out, he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. For truly, every time we gather to eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of the living Lord until he comes again. Amen. Will the communion servers please come forward?
body of Christ broken for you. the cup of salvation poured out for you. Let us pray. God of our salvation, you have fed us with bread and cup, with word and sacrament. Lead us out now with your spirit, with the power of love, that we might share the good news with all whom we meet, in word, in deed, and in our hearts. Amen. I would invite you to rise.
are so much more than just ourselves. We are connected to our families. We are connected to one another in this fellowship. And most importantly, we are connected in Christ. And may the love of God, the grace, peace, and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord.